hi there welcome to my channel my name is Leah and today is Tuesday so that means it's time for get ready with murder this is a weekly series where I will do a full face of makeup and tell you a true crime story today we are going to talk about the list family murders from the 1970s it's kind of crazy so if you want to see how I did this makeup and hear a crazy story make sure you stay tuned Get started with today's story. This is the story of the List family murders. Okay, our story starts with John List. He was born in 1925 in Michigan. His parents were German immigrants. Um, so he grew up to be hardworking and you know kind of a proud man. He ended up um, serving in the Korean War and when he came back from active duty he met a widow. She was actually a war widow. Um, her name was Helen. Um, and her husband was actually killed in active duty in the same war. Um, but when he came back, they met and they fell in love. She had a daughter, Brenda, um, and they got married in 1951. After John finished his um, duties with the military in the war, um, and as far as serving in the war, um, he got out of the military and moved back to the Detroit area with his new family, um, where he started working as an accountant locally. He actually worked for a paper company as an auditor there and then you know advanced in his career as the supervisor of the audit department um, his wife helen had become an alcoholic over the years and she was growing increasingly unstable they had had their um, children by this point he and helen had three children um, brenda helen's daughter from her first marriage um, was out of the house. So with Brenda's kind of increasing instability, John was able to take a better job with a larger manufacturing company, Xerox, <laughs> because he had all of that paper knowledge and they moved to upstate New York. So he eventually kept working at his career and you know kept moving up and moving forward. So eventually he moved to the point where he took a position as vice president and comptroller at a bank in New Jersey and he took his entire family and moved out that way. And when I say moved, I mean he bought a gigantic mansion for his entire family to live in. And his mansion was actually so big that he had his mother come and live with them after his father had passed. And like by mansion, I mean 19 rooms. It had a ballroom, marble fireplaces, and a Tiffany skylight that was like one of a kind. So they looked like the perfect family, went to church every Sunday, he had a great job, kids were doing good, you know, taking care of his mom, Helen seemed like she was getting better. Um, everything just seemed pretty great at the time. That is until John lost his job. And I'm not sure if he invested poorly or if his house costs too much money or what, but eventually after losing his job, he ran out of money. And instead of telling his family that he lost his job and they were having some issues, he just pretended to go to work every day. He'd get up in the morning, he'd go and, um, you know, kiss his wife goodbye, say have a great day, he'd come home at five o'clock. But really what he was doing was, you know, going to a train station and reading the paper, having some tea, hanging out around town, and then coming back at the end of the day like he had just been at work all day so his family really had no idea what was going on but he got by for like a bit on this plan but you know you can only go so long pretending to go to work and skimming money from your elderly mother's bank accounts before you know mortgage payments on your mansion are going to come due um so instead of you know going on welfare or accepting help for their position he saw no other option because he was super proud um and i will say this i am of german <laughs> my heritage is german we are a very stubborn and prideful people we just are so instead of you know going on welfare maybe selling a giant house or even just telling his family that they were having problems and you know maybe moving um that was apparently not an option for this guy and his insane pride so what he did one morning was, you know, say he was going to stay home a little bit later from going to work, waited till his kids went to school, and then shot his wife, Helen. And after he shot Helen, he went upstairs while his mother was still sleeping and shot her and he left her in her bed. Um, he waited until his daughter Patricia came home from school, shot her, and then his youngest son came home from school and he shot him. 
So after he killed his son Frederick, who was his youngest son, he, you know, thought perhaps I need a snack and basically sat down at the kitchen table, had a sandwich while he called banks to close out his bank accounts. And then it was time for his middle son John's soccer match. So um, John Sr. Yeah, um, you know, had his bank accounts all closed out and then went and cheered on his kid at his soccer game. After the soccer game was over, he brought John Jr. home and shot him in the chest and his entire family was then. So after he, you know, killed his entire family, he took all of the bodies to the ballroom where he had, the ballroom, where he had, um, where he had sleeping bags laid out and just kind of laid them all there in a pile and wrote a note to his pastor because he felt his pastor would understand. And in the note to his pastor, he basically stated that he felt that if his family was poor and out of money, the evils of the world that happened basically from being poor would force his family to turn from God. And the only way to ensure their entrance to heaven, instead of, you know, being poor, was to um, kill them. So even though he did all of this for the good of his family, he also didn't probably want to get caught by the police and actually have to deal for deal with it here on earth. Um, what he did was he went throughout the house, like cleaned up the crime scenes. He took his scissors and cut his head or his face out of every photo. So like he wasn't in any of the pictures in the home when police got there. He canceled all of the deliveries and he called his kids school to tell them that they would be on vacation for a few weeks. So don't worry when they don't come to school. And then he turned on all the lights in the mansion, um, turned on a bunch of radios with religious music and hymns playing, and then went to bed for the evening. And the next morning he got up and just left town. The neighbors didn't really notice anything because I guess as a family, they didn't really like, they weren't very neighborly. They didn't you know, know them very well, but the neighbors kind of realized something was up after about a month. Um, when the lights and the music were just constantly on at the mansion. So when the neighbors called police and they got there, they found, you know, the music playing, the lights were on, and they found a five page note from John saying that the bodies were in the ballroom. This is why he killed them um, and basically peace out, I'm gone. Shortly thereafter, the FBI did find his car at uh, the JFK airport, but really they had no other leads on where he might have gone. Um, his whole family was really all he knew and they were all dead. So he, they had no leads and the case went cold. So 18 years later, they came up with an idea. They had a, um, like a facial recreation kind of person make a physical bust of what John would have looked like. And then it went on America's Most Wanted. So the show aired in 1989 and because the bust or like the recreation of John in like a clay form of what he would have looked like about 20 years later was like spot on accurate, I guess, um, tons of tips started coming in and they got one that was a really good tip from a, a woman in Richmond, Virginia. This woman in Richmond said that her neighbor looked suspiciously like that bust. He was super into going to church and he was an accountant. So John List had moved to Colorado after he killed his family, changed his name to Robert Clark, met a woman and they got married and then they moved to Richmond, Virginia. And that's where he'd lived out the last 18 years. Of course, John was arrested. And it is noteworthy that this was only nine days after America's Most Wanted Air. Like, good job, armchair detectives. After his trial started in 1990, um, John List's lawyers tried to argue that he was suffering from PTSD after having served in the Korean War um, and that, you know, it just all got to him one day and then he just killed his family. However, the prosecutors brought in expert um, psychologists who interviewed him and said basically he was suffering from a midlife crisis um, and that was no reason to kill his whole family. Now, I'm not sure if midlife crisis is an actual like psychological term or issue, but that's what they said. So after the trial, the jury found him, you know, guilty, of course, uh, and sentenced him to five life sentences. 
So he went to prison and started serving his life sentences and he actually in 2002, which was about 12 years after his trial, had an interview with Connie Chung and he said some kind of interesting things during this interview. He said that his reason for killing his whole family but not killing himself was because he believed that if he killed himself he would not be able to get into heaven and all he wanted was to spare his family from the evils of this life and see them again in heaven. So John Liss lived out the end of his years in prison. He died in 2002 of just old guy natural causes and he was 82 years old. So that is the story of the Liss family murders where a guy thought that killing his entire family was a ticket to heaven over just being poor for a little bit. I hope you guys like this story. I thought it was pretty interesting. I feel like I've heard it um, recently. I know I haven't seen that America's Most Wanted, but I don't know, I feel like I've heard that story. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because I will love you forever. Have a super great rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, 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 bye.